Okay, so look, I know there's like a dozen things I should be doing with this router, like setting up the low pressure cutoff switch and the tool changing macros and the tool rack and finishing the enclosure and the wiring and all the things that would make this router a lot more useful and enjoyable to use. But I wanted to see how it would cut steel. The first cut was obviously not very good. And the subsequent 23 test cuts were not very good. I took meticulous notes, hoping to show kind of a scientific progression towards perfection of my test cuts on this router. And I'm not gonna bother showing you that or any of these test cuts in detail because frankly, they were all pretty bad. I've been using HSM Advisor for feeds and speeds. And while it worked pretty well in aluminum, it's definitely showing issues here in steel. And that's not a fault of the software or even really the fault of my router or the spindle. It's just showing the difference in assumptions that the software is making. These calculators are designed for large VMCs and the assumption is that the limiting factor is the horsepower of the spindle, which isn't really the case here. The limiting factor of gantry small desktop routers is the rigidity of the frame and the force of the stepper motors. I admit it probably took me longer to realize this than I should have, but thanks to the help of folks in YouTube comments and forums and other venues, uh, I finally realized what was going on and dialed in the settings a little more appropriately. Oh yeah, remember all the things I still need to wire up? One of those is the drawbar interlock, so it doesn't activate while the spindle is spinning. Oops. To start triangulating onto the right set of parameters for my machine, I decided to stop doing the straight cuts and start trying adaptive clearing paths. These take a little longer because the block is set up a little differently and it would give me time to fiddle with the settings in real time to see how they affect the cut. My first approach was to slow down the feed rate, thinking that the steppers just weren't strong enough and the system wasn't rigid enough to push through the steel at a higher feed rate. And this did help a little bit, but it still sounded pretty terrible. So the next step was to start increasing the RPM of the spindle and seeing if that would help compensate. It did start to sound a little better, and so I started to inch up the feed rate as well and just kind of alternated increasing feed rate and spindle speed, depending on which sounded better. This testing went on for a little while, and it started to sound passable towards the end, but not great by any means. In between tests, I pulled the tool holder out thinking that I would choke up on the end mill a little bit more to make it a little bit more rigid and I discovered something a little embarrassing. This is not, in fact, how you're supposed to load ER collets, but it was how I was loading ER collets. Doing it this way, you can see that the collet doesn't seat fully inside the tool holder, so there's a little bit of a lip, and it's probably not gripping the tool as strongly as it should, and probably leading to some deflection and chatter. After doing some research, I discovered that you're supposed to clip the collet into the tool holder head first and then screw it in and then add your tool. Lesson learned, I suppose. The final concern for my tests was the steel itself. I'm not entirely sure what kind of mystery metal that was. I think it was A36, but it came from an eBay bundle and you never really know with those little chunks of cutoffs. So armed with a properly configured collet, good-ish speeds and feeds, and I grabbed a known bar stock that was A36, I set out to try some hopefully successful pocketing runs. This first test is a 0.25 depth of cut, 0.03 step over, 15,000 RPM spindle speed and a 50 inches per minute feed rate. I forgot to record what the ramping speed was for the helical. 
Suffice to say, it wasn't very good in any of the tests, and I'm still trying to figure out good helical plunge rates. I'd say at this point, I was cautiously optimistic. It sounds tremendously better than it did at the very beginning, although you can still hear a pretty high-pitched chatter, but this is a chatter on the end mill and the workpiece at least, and not the entire machine shaking itself to death. So I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this cut. We do a second pass to go down to the final depth, and then we will have a 2D contour to clean up the walls and a horizontal to clean up the bottom. Test 2 has nearly the same parameters. The only difference is the feed rate is up to 100 inches per minute, while the rest of the parameters stayed the same. So the depth of cut's 0.25, step over is 0.03, and the RPM is 15,000. I have to say, I think that sounds pretty good. It's cruising along at a nice rate. It doesn't sound chattery. The spindle sounds good. It's making nice chips. I think you can see on the video that they're coming out a little yellow, a little bit of straw color. So the heat's not just entirely building up in the tool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy, honestly. Let's fast forward and we'll see the next one. For this next test, the siren song of heavier chip load called to me, and I just couldn't resist. So the depth of cut is still 0.25. The step over is now up to 0.07. The RPM is down to 12,000 to compensate, and the feed rate somewhere in the middle at about 86. So the spindle bogged down just a little bit at the end of the helical ramp, but once it got into the cut continuously, it sounds just fine, honestly. There's no noticeable chatter, the chips are nice and blue and rather hot, and I think it's looking pretty good. And this last test, well, I think I got a bit cocky. I was really happy with how the chips were coming off the last test, so I pushed the step over up to 0.99 and the RPM dropped down to 10,000. And I think that was just too much for this poor abused end mill. I have a few theories about what happened. I think the chip load was just too aggressive and the RPM was too low. These high-speed spindles lose torque the lower RPM you get, and I should have learned that from my very initial tests where I was getting terrible, terrible chatter with lower RPMs. I think dropping the end mill probably didn't help. There might have been a chip on a flute that I didn't notice, and running it in all those tests not fully secured in the collet probably didn't help either. I'm sure it was chattering up a storm. And lastly, running this with coolant may not have been the best idea. I'm honestly not sure if you're supposed to run mist coolant on steel. Maybe the intermittent cooling from the fog buster was 
contributing a thermal shock on the end mill. So maybe I should have been running this dry with just air blast. I'm not sure. If someone knows, I would love to hear. Please leave a, a comment down below. In any case, it gave up the ghost. But I think I have enough data to paint a decent picture of the, the correct feeds and speeds for this router in mild steel. I think service finish is entirely acceptable, especially for a gantry router working in steel. So I'll take it. And a little more tuning of the finish passes, I think, would would be helpful. There is definitely more chatter than I would have liked on the finish passes, but I think that's just a matter of tweaking and tuning and probably jacking the RPMs way up. Accuracy of the pocket was remarkably good. So the pocket was supposed to be one inch by two inches and measured by some gauge blocks. It came out within two thousandths. And mind you, this is with zero step calibration or otherwise tuning the machine. It's basically as soon as I could use it, I did. So I think there are a few interesting takeaways from this exercise. First, I really need to wire up that safety interlock so I don't throw tool holders across the room. Second, it helps to install your collets correctly. No real surprise there. But most importantly, I think this demonstrates that a CNC desktop router can do an admirably good job in steel, and anyone that tells you otherwise is honestly full of it. I mean, sure, there are gonna be some challenges and there's a lot of tweaking and tuning of the recipe to do. But the machine and the spindle did great, in my opinion, considering the circumstances. Fit and finish is pretty good. It didn't sound overly chattery once I got things dialed in. And it was removing a pretty respectable amount of material. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and I'll see y'all soon with new projects.